so the three stage manifold for the M52 engine. Um, I wanted to make a video about this because I, I have a, quite a bit of experience with this manifold. I have swapped my own manifold into my own car. I have flashed the car and everything, and I and I rebuilt manifolds. I rebuilt this about and I usually sell them to swap into other cars. I have swapped them into other cars. So I have done this a few times and I, and I know roughly the way it works. So I wanted to go and give you guys a bit of a review on how it drives, how it will improve the ability, how it works and what it takes to swap into the car and all that, all that stuff. So let's begin at the basics. Let's begin at how the manifold works and what it does and what it is in itself, what the three-stage manifold is. Okay, so what the three-stage manifold is basically is a variable length intake manifold. So the way that it works is this. Let's say that we have a cylinder right here. So as the cylinder pulls air in, as it is on the intake stroke, it's gonna pull air through the intake valve into the cylinder, which is creating a vacuum inside the cylinder. You can feel the air. So this air is kind of being rushed in from the intake runner. When the piston goes down and it goes into the compression stroke, this valve closes, and that air that was coming in, that air is gonna go and hit the back of the intake valve, and it's going to get a bit of pressure. So this pressure is gonna go and send the air back in to the intake runner, which is going to hit the back of the intake runner, and then it's going to bounce back in towards the intake valve. If this, this of course, the time that this takes is very much dependent on the width of the intake runner, the length of it, uh, its shape as well. So if you time all of this correctly, you're going to get the air rushing back in after it bounces back at the same time that your intake valve is opening, which means that you're gonna get way better filling inside the cylinder with a lot more air that is being rushed in, which is going to, of course, lead to more power, which is what you want and why the three-stage manifold is even a thing. So, when you that that is usually that usually happens at a specific RPM range because normal intake manifolds have a specific size, specific width to the intake runners, which is usually adapted to uh, give a bit of mid-range power, a bit of roll and a bit of top end. So you, you sacrifice a bit of the top, sacrifice a bit of the bottom, just to get an even power band. So they usually tune to about 3,500, 4,000 RPMs. What the three-stage manifold does is that it, since it has three different length runners, it will be it will, you have a runner for low RPM, which is going to be a very long one with a thin one then you're gonna have a runner for mid range which is going to be an in between and then you're gonna have a runner for top end which is going to be a very wide one and a very short one so this will allow this will allow the car the engine to make power at lower pm more power and torque mid range and you're gonna get power at the top end as well so there is three stage manifold there is no downside to the three stage manifold there's absolutely no downside bmw was not going to design a part for this engine that was going to have a downside they, they, when they design something, they design something that is good in every way and it benefits the car and the driving experience in any way. And that's exactly what the three-stage manifold is. So let's go over the tuning aspect of this swap and how to convert the car to the, to the three-stage manifold and how, what you need to do to tune the car and everything. So let's begin at the, the biggest misconception here is that you need to pay some clown six, seven, eight hundred dollars to even get the car to accept the three-stage manifold to run good with it. That's a complete lie. You don't need to pay someone that much money for that unless you're getting a specialized tune from a known tuner that is good with this engine to go and make over the, the stock power that you can get with a normal tune like let's say a custom tune you don't need to pay that much money so this car has the brimmer labs the 330i tune and basically what brimmer labs is is a, a software free software that goes and gives you a file to unlock the dme and it gives you a file to flash the car to 330i I have a video that goes over this entire conversion and how to flash it yourself. I flashed it myself with my computer and a cable into the car and I flashed it myself and then the car was running a 330i software. That's that's the way that I did it on my car. It is the most cost effective way. And of course, if you want to go a bit higher in power, you can go and contact Bremer Labs and maybe ask them for a custom tune that adds more power or you can go and contact whatever other tune that you might choose. But that is the cheapest way to do it. You don't need to go and pay a bunch of money to do the swap. It's definitely worth it. If you can do if you can do this conversion for let's say you can get a manifold with good distance for 300 and something 400 dollars and then you can flash a car for free you're getting 25 horsepower for what 300 400 dollars that's a really good deal in my opinion so the swap is definitely worth doing and it is not impossible like many people want you to believe so you know let's go into a bit of background of what my car is and what it has done to it so this is a 328 xi e92 so 230 horsepower from the factory uh, being an XI, it has a shorter 3.91 final drive, which you know keeps the revs a bit higher. That is a worth of well upgrade that many people do to these cars, apart from the three-stage manifold. So here you can see my three-stage manifold. Uh, if you didn't know, you would think that it's a stock manifold because it is, you know, it is meant to be in this engine bay. It's not an invasive, you know, uh, conversion. Only difference is you can see the little disc in here, which open and close the runner lengths. You can see how this disc right here 
has the bonding mark on the side because it was open by me and I go and I recheck all the components and I you know I refresh everything because you know you have to keep in mind that most of these cars that came with a three stage manifold they're what you know eight and ten two of years old so by now most of the discs are you know small like two editors inside there and everything is, gets oil from the PCB system and everything gets damaged so by now most of them are gonna they're gonna be faulty or they're gonna be working you know incorrectly so you definitely want to get some that are good and they're you know they're made probably hopefully rebuilt so you know that you don't have to worry about it again so like i said the car has a three stage manifold it has a bimmer labs 330i tune for the engine so that is the you know the free tune that converts the car to a 330i from a 328 so 255 brake horsepower that is what we want that's basically we have an e 32 330i here and for the transmission we have the software from an e83 x3 um, a 3.0 si so that car makes from the factory 268 brake horsepower or 262, 258, whatever you want to call it. Um, so that's the, that, that car uses the same engine with the three stage manifold and with the same transmission that my car has. So what we're getting here basically is the same, the same setup that we have here, but with transmission calibration that is adapted to more horsepower than the base 230 that 328 makes. So that's what we want. That's because the transmission is going to behave better. It's going to, you know, it's going to respond to the engine as if the engine made the amount of power that it actually does. Because your stock transmission still thinks that the engine makes 230 until you go on and flash it with this calibration. So that's definitely something to look into. But that is just, you know, a quick look into the car and what's being done to it. Of course, the car is going to be getting headers very soon. Some headers that I'm going to be having made for my car for for the M52 engine, and we might have them for sale as well soon so that's just another model we're going to be doing to this car but as of now as just stock car with the manifolds it's definitely a completely different experience as you're going to be seeing when i will when we go and take it for a drive one thing if you're looking for a diy step-by-step -step on how to swap the manifold into your car i have a video that goes over it here in the channel that goes over how i pull the manifold out of this car and i put the other one in and i finish the whole swap you know clip by clip bolt by bolt step by step everything the whole process of how to do it so i will link that in the description so you can see how to do it it looks very daunting at first but once you do it the first time you will realize that the m52 engine is probably one of the easiest bmw engines to work on matter of fact a while ago the engine almost sucked in water and the three stage manifold saved it because you know of it's kind of like snail shape and you know on the side of the road i just went and pulled the manifold out it's literally seven bolts pull the manifold out empty it out of water put it back in and you're back on the road so you know it seems hard to do at first but it is definitely an easy job to do i'll show you one of the manifolds that i have back here so you can see it. So these are the these are some three stage manifolds. Um, most of these are being sent out to customers and people are going to be swapping them into 330 uh, and 328, 325s, stuff like that. Uh, these are the headers that we're gonna be putting on. Pretty beautiful headers. So we're gonna have a video all on these. So let me pull this guy out so I can show you guys a bit of a closer look. I have them in a plastic bag so you don't, they don't get dust inside the runners and everything and that goes into the engine. So it's definitely a must. So let me pull this out real quick. So this is the manifold right here, as you can see. And you can see the six runners that goes into the cylinders. And you can see where the large disc goes. And you can see where the small one goes in here in the back. So, you know, you can see that it has kind of a weird shape. Get it to focus. It's kind of a weird shape. That's because of the different runner lengths that the disc above actuate. You can see the long one, the short one, and the, the mid-range one. So this is the piece that kind of, that you swap in there. This one, like I said, you know, is a bit different one because it has this place right here. This holds for a metal plate, but you know, mine doesn't. There's different versions. Mine doesn't have the plates, but they all, they all work pretty much the same way. And these right here are the disc valves. You know, they're going, these are getting rebuilt. Their motors are out for cleaning. So these are getting rebuilt. So then they can be put into the manifolds and you know, they're ready and good to go into the car. But you know, we're going to these and other stuff in a more detailed video over the three stage, which is more of a review. So, you know, um, as you do the up, there's various different tuners that you can go with. You can go with Bremer Labs, Stage FP, IT Bottle Work, Turner. There's a bunch of different options. So, you can just choose from there. Those usually they will go and help you go above the 255 brake horsepower after you know you might have some more supporting mods and everything. So, there's a million options you can just look on, look for reviews and everything. The one that I'm showing you is the most cost effective way. To go and make the most amount of power per per dollar that you can on this engine and this swap is definitely one of the top ones for achieving that so let's get a bit into the driving dynamics of the car in itself and let's take it for a drive as you can see i got a few few lights on the dash those are just x drive things from the transfer case actuator no big deal that's the thing affect the ability at all 
when you fresh a car you will not have any lights at all no check engine lights no bullshit so you don't really need to worry about that stuff the tune is basically a stock tune which is a great thing about it and the manifold would drive just like a stock car so it's definitely not a worry that oh you're gonna have something that's gonna be like a, one of those modified cars that are a pain in the ass to drive my car is already warmed up so i don't really need to go through all that sequence but the car definitely pulls a lot harder that is not even full throttle at all you can see my little lights from the transfer case activator that has nothing to do with engine response that has only traction control and all that bullshit It doesn't make the exhaust louder or anything all it does is add power you know at the end of the day you're getting an oem bmw part the thing i really like about this manifold is that um it definitely has a lot of power i'm not a person that likes to rev the engine out a lot for no reason so if i can go and get a manifold that a mod that is going to add power without affecting drivability or raising the uh how high I have to read the engine to get to the power it is definitely a worthwhile upgrade in my opinion decided to turn the light on a bit so let's go for a drive I'm, I usually drive the car in manual mode but we can go on D as well Guess you're gonna stay there, buddy. Let's go on floor it. Car pulls a lot harder, I'll tell you that. And we're only in D mode, we're not even in DS, so the transmission is not shifting as hard as it can. But you can definitely feel when the disc is open and close. You can feel how the runner length is helping you make more power. And there, there is power from as little as 1500 RPMs. I remember when I had the stock Triton ERI with no muds done to it. Sometimes if you forgot that you were in sixth gear and you got off the highway and you put the foot, the foot down on the street, you wouldn't be going anywhere. This thing will pull from from 1500 RPM, 2000 RPM, so it will pull up. It will, it will move it up almost like a, like a turbocharged engine. That's it. That's, that, it is a great thing. It is very good to drive. One thing that you need to keep in mind when you're doing this conversion is that uh, you need to have your disc above the little flaps uh, tested. You need to test them with IMPA. I uh, will make a video on how to, how to test them because if those disc above are not working, uh, you're not going to get the benefits of the manifold. You, it's going to be almost like, like driving a stock car with a few mods. So you 100% need to have those discs tested so you can get the full benefits of the variable runner length. here definitely a lot more torque I'm a, I'm a big fan of of torque on these engines and previously to the 328 i had a 335i which as many of you know is a twin turbo m54 engine that makes peak power at like 1500 000 rpms so one thing that i like about this is that it starts to mimic that engine more of course with less power because being that it's not turbocharged but it starts to mimic it more starts to behave more like it since you're getting a lot more power everywhere let's put it into ds mode for a bit usually ds mode is very hated by everyone including me because it only all it does is hold the gears but with the with the flash for the transmission it helps it a lot and it actually behaves like you would expect it it's not perfect but it is a lot better One 
thing I do like about the mode is that it seems to love the converter up. So it does let you get a more linear power into the rear wheels, it seems. Let's floor it. Gotta be careful out here, some of those rolls are pretty junky. is definitely the mode to be in. Definitely is a completely different car. If you go drive a uh, go drive a stock to the NI gonna be like wow wow my car is a lot a lot a lot quicker a lot more responsive let's go take it for a bit of a spin around here so we're in manual mode actually let's go on DS right and let's just go on floor from a stock. Oh, let's put the AC off. Pretty wild performance, I'll tell you that. Drive a bit more monitoring now. Let's go. Let's go a bit easier in the throttle. Also, the way it behaves is going to depend a lot on how you drive it. Of course, since these cars adapt to to how you drive them. I've noticed that since I started driving the car a lot harder, and the car began to respond a lot better and feel a lot more powerful. So you know, you definitely want when you do the stop, you want to reset the adaptations so that the car can adapt to how you're gonna start driving it with the manifold. Because mine, it took a bit, it took a few days to start, you know, feeling very powerful. I was like, oh, wow. At first I was like, oh, maybe this swap might not be, no, yeah, it is it. This swap is definitely worth it. So, you know, we just came back from driving and, of course, uh, watching a video about something is not the same thing as, you know, driving the car itself. And you know, you're feeling how it accelerates, how it behaves and everything. So you kind of have to take my word for it and the words of my word and the word of people that have actually done the swap, because a lot of, like I said, there's a lot of misinformation and people that tell you they can't do it, but it definitely can be done. And this car had it done, and it performs flawlessly. It is great, and it is definitely worth it. So you know, if you do decide to do it, I mean, you're not gonna be disappointed. So if you're interested in getting your hands on a three-stage manifold, one that is ready to go, you know, like mine, so that I have the rebuilt discs and everything, you know, is tested already and is, you know ready to bolt in and drive out that you're not gonna have any issues with it i will leave a link in the description to my ebay listing where i have my three stage manifolds that have the rebuilt valves and everything so you can if you want you can buy one of those and you'll be good to go with the manifold but either way you know if you want any instructions on how to install the manifold i have a video like i said that shows you how to install the manifold step by step i have a video how to tune the car and i also have some videos with some miscellaneous stuff like the pcb setup which is going to be pretty much the same as the one that you have in your car but it might vary sometimes so it is of course good to watch and if you have any questions regarding the swap or anything you can go and post it in the comments and i'll try to help you out thank you for watching